Imagine a continent twice the size of Australia, buried under miles of ice. A place so cold, so remote, that it's often called a white desert. This is Antarctica, the Earth's most mysterious landmass. But what if this frozen wasteland isn't empty? What if it's hiding a secret, something buried for millions of years, waiting to be found? Our story begins in the year 2048. The world is buzzing with news of a strange magnetic anomaly detected deep beneath the ice of Queen Maudland in Antarctica. At first, scientists think it's just a geological quirk. But then, satellites revealed something impossible, perfect symmetrical patterns forming under the ice. These shapes aren't natural. Something is down there. An international team of scientists, led by the brilliant Dr. Elara Voss, is dispatched to investigate. They set up a high-tech research base and begin drilling. As they go deeper, things get weird. Their advanced tools start to malfunction. Compasses spin wildly. And the ice cores they pull up contain materials that simply shouldn't be their materials. Not from Earth. Inside the research dome, the team's geophysicist, Dr. Rog Patel, is glued to his holographic display. He calls Alara over, his voice filled with disbelief. You won't believe this, he says. We've just hit something metallic two and a half kilometers below the surface. Alara suggests it might be a meteorite. But Rog shakes his head, not unless meteorites are built with titanium lattice structures. The room falls silent. The implication is staggering. What they've found is artificial, constructed, buried for an unimaginable length of time. Two weeks later, their drill breaks through. The camera they send down sends back images that leave the entire world breathless. Beneath the ancient ice lies a colossal structure, a perfect hexagon stretching for hundreds of meters. Its walls are carved with intricate glowing symbols, pulsing with a soft blue light unlike any language ever seen. The news leaks and global chaos ensues. Conspiracy theories explode online. Is it a lost city like Atlantis? An alien outpost? Governments scramble, demanding access. The UN quickly declares the site classified and imposes a total communication blackout. Only Ella Ra's small team is permitted to continue their work, now in complete isolation. They prepare to descend. As they lower themselves into the vast icy cavern, it feels like entering another dimension. The ice gives way to walls of polished black metal that seem to swallow the light. The air is unnaturally still, with only a low, constant hum that vibrates through their bones. Dr. Ling Wei, the team's linguist, reaches out and touches one of the glowing glyphs. There, alive, she whispers. The symbols brighten at her touch, shifting and rearranging themselves as if they are studying her in return. Just as Alara orders them to start recording, the ground trembles violently. The glyphs flare, flooding the chamber with a blinding white light. And then everything goes black. When Alara wakes up, the lights are dim and flickering. Her suit's sensors are haywire. Rog and Ling are unconscious nearby.
She looks at the walls, and a chill runs down her spine. The once smooth metal surfaces are now pulsing with what look like veins of light. I think we activated something, she says, as the others come to Ling, staring at the ceiling in awe, points upward, Ilara, the symbols. They're showing constellations. Holographic star maps now cover the ceiling. They are familiar, yet distorted. Rog pulls up his astronomical database. His face turns pale. This alignment. These stars haven't been in this position for at least 12 million years. The truth hits them like a physical blow. Whatever built this place existed long before humanity, long before our species even walked the earth. Over the next few days, they ventured deeper into the structure. Each chamber they enter awakens, projecting holographic archives of a long-lost world. They see images of sprawling crystalline cities under twin suns and graceful towering beings made of pure light. But then the holograms shift to scenes of terrifying catastrophe, black storms engulfing the skies, oceans boiling away, and continents freezing over in an instant. Ling manages to translate fragments of the glowing script. It speaks of a cycle of sleep, she explains. A refuge built beneath the frozen lands, where memory can endure until the world is ready again, Rog wonders. So, this is a vault, a time capsule from a dying civilization. Alara isn't so sure, or, she says grimly, a warning. The strangeness intensifies. Equipment fails without reason. The crew starts hearing faint whispers on their comes, voices in languages no one recognizes. Then, a technician named Alvarez vanishes. They find his footprints leading into a sealed chamber, where they just stop. He's gone, as if erased from existence. Their satellite link to the outside world is dead. All they get is static. But one night, a distorted female voice breaks through, repeating Ilara's name over and over. That's when Ilara starts having dreams. She sees herself standing under a black sun on a world covered in silver jungles. A being of light approaches her and speaks directly into her mind. The cycle must end. The sleepers must not awaken. When she wakes up, there's a glowing symbol on her wrist, identical to the glyphs on the walls. As they continue their descent, the air grows warmer. The ice around them begins to melt, revealing new corridors leading even deeper. Roger's sensors are off the charts. We're approaching a massive power source, he says. Ling looks at the new mark on Ilara's wrist. You're linked to it, she says. It's responding to you. Ilara can feel it too. With every step she takes, the walls of the structure pulse in time with her own heartbeat. Finally, they reach the heart of the structure, a vast circular chamber. In the center, a sphere of pure light floats above a pool of dark liquid metal, emitting a sound like a giant rhythmic heartbeat. Rog is awestruck. It's an energy call, but the output is impossible. It's rewriting the laws of physics around it. As Alara steps closer, the mark on her wrist burns. 
Visions flood her mind, the cities of light, the storms of ice, and finally, a terrifying darkness swallowing everything. She collapses. It wasn't a vault, she whispers. It's a prison. The horrifying truth dawns on them. The ancient beings didn't build this place to save themselves. They built it to lock something away. Ling's voice trembles. The cycle of sleep. It wasn't for them. It was for what they trapped here. Rog backs away from the core. Then the power source, Alara finishes his sentence, is the containment field. At that exact moment, the lights flicker violently. The sphere of light brightens and cracks of energy spiderweb across its surface. It's destabilizing. The field is collapsing. Rod shouts. The voice from Ilara's dream returns, clear and powerful in her mind. Ilara Voss, you have broken the seal. The cycle ends. The chamber erupts into total chaos. The floor splits open, and a blinding column of light shoots upward, piercing through kilometers of ice and lighting up the Antarctic sky. The team scrambles for the exit, but the very walls are melting and reforming around them. Rog grabs her arm. We have to shut it down. I can't, Elara screams. It's inside me now. Nuts using me to awaken. The ancient beings hadn't just built a prison. They had bound part of their own life force into the lock, waiting for a successor to carry their burden. And she was it. She wasn't meant to awaken the prisoner. She was meant to become its new jailer. With every ounce of her strength, Elara makes a choice. She turns away from her team and walks directly into the sphere of light. She is engulfed in a searing, blinding energy. She feels her body and mind dissolve, not into death, but into something new, merging with the ancient power. Outside the core, Rog and Ling watch in horror and amazement as the light expands and then silently implodes, vanishing completely. The chamber falls dark and still. The core is gone. The prison is secure. Months later, rescue teams finally arrive at the abandoned research base. There is no trace of Alara Voss or her team. All that remains are their fragmented data logs. But on one of the final recordings, through the static, a faint whisper can be heard. It's Alara's voice. The sleepers remain bound. The cycle continues. Guard the ice, for it remembers. Years pass. In 2053, a new anomaly is detected on the other side of the continent. A familiar rhythmic pulse, dismissed by the world as simple tectonic activity. But deep beneath the ice, a faint blue light continues to beat the heart of an ancient guardian, waiting patiently for the day it might be needed again. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey into the secrets of the ice. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the unknown. We'll see you next time.